Let's pray together. Father, please help today, Lord, as a church, as we as a church focus in upon your work in and through us. Lord, what we're doing here that you've called us to, but also what we're doing around the world, we pray, God, that you'd allow us as a church to have the endurance necessary, the humility necessary to accomplish this amazing task that you've set before us. Please provide for all of our needs. Give us, Lord, commitment, strength, passion, Lord, to accomplish your will. God, we know that if you don't build the house, the laborers labor in vain who build it. And so, God, we, Lord, we submit to you and humble ourselves before you. And we ask, God, that you build this not us. Let us be your hands and feet, God, but I pray that you would get us out of the way. Thank you, Lord, for calling us to something that in ourselves we're not worthy of. And please be glorified, God, for making your name famous throughout the earth. And in this context, on the island of Kauai, in Jesus' name, amen. Almost three years ago, God surprised Apologia Church by giving us the passion and commitment to plant a church on the island of Kauai. A lot of time has gone by, a lot of work has gone in, a lot of work on our hearts as a church. And right now we're in the place where we're ready. We're going to Kauai, we're planting this church, we're bringing the gospel to that island. So here we are. It's been a couple years now. There have been uh, a number of trips with uh, teams to go out to the island to figure out how to best love these people and serve them and how to best bring the good news of Christ to the island. We have an amazing team that we're sending that has just obviously been raised up by God to do what they're going to do. And uh, it's exciting. Um, there are so many obstacles to overcome, but we trust in God and we hope in the future and we know that God has big things for us in Kauai. Why don't you go ahead and share um, your burden for the island, why you believe God is calling you to go. Shelly and I have been in, in homeless and, and addiction ministry for about seven years now. And so when, when we initially had, had heard about the, the initial mission trip to, to go into Kauai, uh, it really piqued our interest, and and once we hit the island, as Jeff explained earlier, um, there was when he when he had mentioned that this the spiritual climate on the island is very strange. It's very true. It is, but but our to to see the homelessness, to to know that there's problems with addiction, it just really hit home with us. And as Shelly and I prayed through that, it, it became very clear to us that God had a purpose for us as a part of this mission and, and, and to be a part of the group that was ultimately to go and plant this church. So that, in, in a nutshell, that's, that's what it was for us. Yeah. Can you, Claudia, can you explain to everybody, when we talk about the problem of addiction on the island, what, yes. that, what that looks like and how we could serve that, that need? Yeah, on the island you have uh, um, a significant problem with addiction, primarily meth. Um, but what we found up to this point, there's, I think maybe one, there's one Christian group that does do some ministering towards addiction, but it's primarily for men. It's a very small organization. Outside of that, you see there's, there's secular um, uh, programs that are there, but there's nothing that, that is, as far as what we're used to, um, a, a, a program that's that's biblically based that will address the addiction issue and and as we talk to a lot of the locals and the natives that there's a very strong need for that so yeah I mean it's it's very obvious it's very evident that, that yeah. needs to take place so let me tell you about Claudie and Shelley I've known Claudie and Shelley for a couple of years now and through the course of our relationship I've gotten to see two amazing servants um, people with a lot of consistency 
I think one of the encouraging things for me as a pastor is to see uh, Claudia and Shelley were involved in very difficult ministry uh, before anybody told them to, before anybody asked them to. They clearly had a God-given uh, desire and passion to serve in some of the toughest ministry that most people, if we're honest, uh, try to avoid. For us primarily, when, when we, we approach addiction, we approach it from a biblical standpoint. So when, when, when you look at addiction uh, in scripture, essentially the foundation of it is, is idolatry. It's uh, people have a, they have a worship problem. And so when we come to that place, when we confront addiction from a biblical standpoint, we confront it at that level. That's how we, that's how we approach it. That's significantly different than, than at least what we've seen up to this point that's been on the island. Because there's a huge addiction problem over there and there's not a lot of help for people who are struggling with addiction. In getting to be uh, close with Claudia and Shelley over the years, I've gotten to see two people that are consistent. Uh, they love the Lord. They uh, desire to serve Him. Uh, I've gotten a chance to see two people that are very, very humble that are very teachable, and, and I think that that's um, a critical aspect for people who are going to be leaders in ministry. We want to be obedient to, to the Lord, and we know we really believe that this is what we're supposed to do. Um, of course, we have family that we're going we're gonna to miss, um, but we're just completely willing to do that. Um, on the other side, once we get there, it's not going to be easy at, in any way at all. It's going to be very difficult. The cost of living there is extremely high um, and we we don't know what kind of things we're going to be facing. Claudie has demonstrated that he is not only teachable and humble, he is bold and that he can teach. He can teach God's people. He's passionate about laying his life down for others. He's demonstrated that he's a shepherd. Through all our years uh, with Claudie, he's demonstrated that he is a shepherd. He cares for people. He wants to shepherd people. He wants to care for their needs. He wants to provide for them. He wants to equip them and he cares about the glory of God and he wants to fight for it in the world. And so that's what I've seen in Claudie. And so sending Claudie and Shelley to the island of Kauai hasn't been a difficult process in terms of thinking through it and are they really qualified? Are they the right couple for this work? It's It's been as obvious as the nose on my face. Um, this, this is God's couple to go out there and to and to um, serve the people of Kauai on that island. And in particular, Claudie is um, obviously God's chosen man for this specific work. And so Claudie and Shelley, as a, a couple in ministry and serving the people of Kauai, have my full blessing um, and we're honored to be able to send them. We need funding because um, for the first year, it's gonna be really hard. The first year is, is we really wanna be able to focus on the church plant um, and not have to work full-time jobs and try to work on a, on a brand new church. Um, we know that it's gonna be a lot of hard work and we would like to be able to put 100% of our time into the church plant. And so in that way, funding would help us be able to do that. People are already ready for us to come and they're already anticipating. And, and there's an element in Kauai that knows their days are numbered, I believe, because of the light of the gospel coming. And so we even have people now on other islands, not even Kauai, posting on Craigslist saying like a dangerous cult, Apologia Church is coming to Kauai. Their leader is like David Koresh and uh, Jim Jones. Uh, farthest thing from the truth, those guys are not confessional Orthodox uh, Christians, they're cult leaders and evil men. And the amazing thing is, is we actually are one of the most well-known ministries on the planet in terms of actually reaching the cults and having a ministry for Christianity to the cults. So um, obviously these people don't work really hard and doing their homework, but we already see that kind of opposition coming. You, but your truth helped me to continue to serve Jehovah. It would, the, the true Christ, not a false Christ, sure. Yeah. Well, I'd love to chat with you more. My name is Jeff, yeah. and I'm sure I'm sure we'll meet again. Where are you living? Um, we're gonna be here in Kauai, uh, just Kapa. But I, I'm Jeff. I just good to get to know you. I'm sure I'm sure we'll run into each other. So another example of typical stuff on the island of Kauai: this metaphysical books, uh, spiritual treasures, tarot and angel readings. Just a common theme across the island is the New Age. Um, that influence is literally everywhere. And what's interesting too is uh, we've been here at times 
getting ready for this plant and we've been um, actually engaged uh, by people who are shamans, part of the new age, those sorts of things. So the spiritual climate of the island of Kauai is not like a lot of people think. People think of this as a vacation spot, and of course it is, um, but the influences on the island, not a dominant Christian influence, and particularly no open reformed Christian influence, but you do see, of course, a lot of the cult influence. People have hijacked what was once a Christian kingdom. So it's interesting, between 1820 and 1840, the missionaries came to the island brought the gospel, converted the island, I mean, in no time, overnight, uh, to where they're even converted to their constitution. And then uh, time goes by, the United States government ultimately perpetrates an injustice upon the Hawaiian people. But what took place was not a void. What took place was the New Age came in. What took place is the cults came in and really hijacked what was once a Christian kingdom. I'm here with Diana. Diana, and uh, thanks for letting us in and chat with you. There seems to be a very interesting oh, landscape, right, of like re religious beliefs even. You know, you've got a very, very, it seems like very heavy emphasis on the new age and the metaphysical and the spiritual. I mean, you can't go to any communi community board in the island and not just see just just tons of, of stuff um, from for the new age and all these different things. In a, in a sense, it looks like there's an attempt at, at recovery in terms of the new age and the spiritual and the natural and the energy and those sorts of things. Is there, is there an attempt at a recovery back to the old ways? And is, is there a bit of a conflict between sort of like the old Christian system? Well, it just depends on who, who you mean. If you mean the new age people or if you mean the Hawaiian people. In the workshop, we were talking a lot about that, about how can we be respectful of the Hawaiians who are predominantly Christian, mm -hmm. you know, and then we have all of us uh, mainland, I guess, people that are coming over, they're really open with their spirituality and their bodies and all of that, and how we need to be really respectful when we're doing massage that most Hawaiians are Christian, mm -hmm. even though that wasn't their original religion, and to be really um, respectful of covering them all the way and not revealing too much and, yeah, yeah. you know, just being really respectful and aware that that is a big part of their culture, the yeah. Christianity part of it. Yeah. I see mostly that Hawaiians are, are Christian and they're kind of resistant or not really into, they call them hippies. They're not into this hippie thing going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> So this last trip was amazing. Uh, we feel like now we know the island. We've created really meaningful and lasting relationships with a lot of uh, people on the island, whether it's Christians who are there and sort of waiting for us, or if it's with the natives on the island, uh, we've created some amazing relationships and that's just blessed us. This last trip was really the final trip to sort of lay the groundwork. We know the island now, we understand it uh, as much as is possible as not living there. Um, we love the people there with a passion that uh, can't be quenched. And um, this last trip was about really figuring out, okay, now how do we do this? We understand what we're going to do. We have a plan. We have our hearts set on this. We have relationships with people. We understand where we need to go, where we want to plant. And so the last trip was really getting there to make sure that we can lay the infrastructure necessary to do what we're going to do. Where are we going to live? Where are we going to have our first worship service and all that stuff? And so the last trip was um, one of the most exciting trips because God showed up for us in ways that can only be God. Okay, so we've been trying all week to get uh, an appointment with the Pineapple Store. The Pineapple Store is the place that the only other Reformed church that we knew of, uh, they used to worship there, and unfortunately they closed up uh, this year, and so that was sad, but we knew that the space was available. So Candy and I and the kids went uh, last week and met with uh, Pam, uh, one of the owners, and uh, she was really hesitant, sort of leery about us at first, and talked about the great relationship they had with this church, and they turned other people down, and so she wasn't like, 
into giving us the space, but she said that we can come back. And she told us to come back on Monday or Tuesday and just to call ahead, let her know that we were coming and then show us the space and everything else, but she wasn't making any promises. And so we showed up Tuesday, four o'clock, uh, left a message, but turns out her husband Chucky wasn't there. So because she rescheduled it, um, kind of threw us off. So we were kind of wandering around and Marcus and I were wandering around, supposed to meet Luke at a store, and we passed by the Kauai Museum, uh, the History of Kauai uh, Museum. And so we've been saying for like two years, we should stop there and you know get some footage and ask some questions. And so we go in there and there's two people at the front and they said that, um, that they were closing in an hour, so it's $15 per person, so there's no real use going now, but we could buy tickets and we can use them all week. And so Marcus just says, hey, do you have anybody here that's an expert that can talk to us about the history of Hawaii. And they said, they said, well, yeah, let's see if Chucky can meet with you. And so Chucky's the head of the museum and um, they call him and he says, yes. So they take us to the museum into his private office and we're sitting in there with them, never dawning on us the name connection. But uh, we sit with him for a while and he's just super excited. He's telling us the history of Kauai. He's just passionate. And so he says, you want me to take you around now? Uh, and so we're like, well, no, really can't do that now. It has to be tomorrow um, because we have an appointment at five o'clock with Chucky and we need to get our equipment. So he makes it to where we can have tomorrow a private meeting at the museum for an hour and a half before the museum even opens, just him and us filming him talking about the history of Kauai. So after this whole thing is set up, he says, can I ask you guys like who you are, what are you doing? And so we said, oh, we're with Apologia Studios. And I said, I'm actually a pastor. And he was like, you're a pastor? I'm an evangelist. And he was like, oh, now I know. Now I know what you're doing. And like, he's like, oh, now, I don't have to hold back. And so he takes us into the museum and he starts sharing with us this incredible story that you'll see um, about the history of Kauai and the Christian history. And like, we're getting like tears in our eyes. He's getting goosebumps. And so he says this, he says, God sent you here. God sent you here. And so we left. And so I called Luke and I told him the whole story. And he's like, what if Chucky is the Chucky from the pineapple store? And I was like, no way. And so Marcus did some looking around uh, on his phone, he found an article with Chucky from the museum and it talked about his wife, Pam, and they're the owners of the pineapple store. So Chucky doesn't know uh, right now who we are ultimately, and we're heading right now to the pineapple store and I can't wait to see his face. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> Isn't that the craziest thing? How did this happen? Isn't it weird? <laughs> Are, are you guys all from Kauai? No, we're from Phoenix. And then planting we're a new planning, church. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's what we're called to do. That's right. Sure, spread his word. That's yeah, right. His, oh, huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Isn't that weird? Isn't that? Okay, well, my wife said, okay, he's got a beard and stuff, so, but he's really nice and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> His face, the confusion in his face was just something I, I will never forget. Uh, that God had orchestrated this in such a way as to make these unique little connections for Apologia Church with believers on the island that are so well connected with the people in Kauai and with the Lord. Uh, it was just stunning. It was just one of those amazing moments. And we have so many of those in Kauai just God showing up and making all this fit together. We learned a lot this last trip. Um, <clears throat> it seems like Kauai is, it's kind of like the tale of two cultures. You have the, the native, the Hawaiian culture, as I mentioned, Aloha, which is really just uh, agape, is essentially what it is. And, uh, and then you have the, the white, howly, hippie, SJW crowd, and it's it's been interesting. Uh, we've gotten some some fun hate mail yep. recently, and from what we can tell, every single not so friendly email or message we've gotten have all been white people that don't want us to come to the island. Um, but it's been the complete opposite from the natives, from the Hawaiian people, and we really, I think. Of all the trips we made, I think this last one was one where we really experienced what aloha is. So when you go and you experience that, you just you fall in love with those people and with the island, and you can't really explain it until you go there and experience it. It's like they're just waiting 
for the gospel. They have the, the gospel is, in, in, is so just engraved in their culture, they don't even realize it. Um, like we mentioned, the, the, their constitution that these natives want, they're dying to, to live by this constitution, which is more Christian constitution than ours is here, like way more. And they don't even realize, they don't even understand why and what it is that they want. And it's, it, they just need to see it, they see the light of the gospel to see it. Like we learned this time that they, every native Hawaiian, like if they sit down and have a meal together, they sing the doxology. There's a bunch of missionaries that are sent here to plant churches, to spread the word, to spread the gospel. Led by Reverend Hiram Bingham. But the first island they go to is the big island. And, and then they're docked out. And so while in the bay, they um, <clears throat> invite the king to come on board for church services. While they walk in on board, Hiram Bingham is beside himself. He's like, he's like heathens. Where is there? They don't have long sleeve shirts. They don't have pants. But guess what? The Hawaiians came with their best dressed cape, their best malo. Now, malo, for those of you, is a loincloth. That is a tuxedo. His reaction really was a human reaction because he didn't realize they had their suits. So they have church services. So Hiram Bingham leads the message. And so they're doing their hymns. And then he calls from under the deck. He calls um, George. So George comes up the deck and he comes with his viol, they call it, a viol. The, the king looks at this boy and like, Wow, he's one of us, you know, he looks like us. He sits there and he's dressed like a British soldier. I mean, he has his fluffy ruffles, he has his coat and all of that, because that's how he was raised, so. And he starts to play his VO and everybody was like, oh, wow, all in awe and wow. Then he starts to sing. The doxology. When we have our paina in the back or our our luncheons in the back, before we eat, we we pule, we pray and we sing doxology, everybody. So Hawaiians today, because of the impact of the gospel, even if they're not attending church, that's right. they, they will be with Ohana that's right. before a meal singing praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. So the people of Kauai are ready. Hawaii has this amazing Christian history, becoming a Christian kingdom. The gospel is so deeply rooted in the culture that it's inescapable. The leaven, is already in the loaf and you're not getting it out. because you can see the effect that the message of Christ has on a people that even after so much has been lost, there's that thing, that element of inescapability. They, they can't escape who they are. And even if you're an atheist in Hawaii and you get together with family, before you eat your meal, they'll sing the doxology. And that is a song to the triune God of the Bible. So even the atheists in Hawaii are singing praises 
to the triune God because of what God did with the gospel in Hawaii. They're ready. They're ready. And by God's grace, we hope to love them the right way and bring them back to Christ. Father, we call upon you now, Lord, to bless Claudie and his call and ministry for your kingdom. Father, we dedicate him to you and to your work. We affirm that we see him as an elder, able to teach, patient when wronged. We pray, Father, that you would use Claudie, Lord, in a mighty way to put Kauai under your feet. We pray that you would have him speak with boldness and compassion, fill him with humility and love. We pray that, Lord, you would speak through him and the gospel coming from his lips to transform the world. Lord, we present him before you now as pastor of Apologia Kauai. One of the hardest things for us to take in and sort of have a moment of sanctification over is where you say that you're going to go to Kauai to plant a church. And even Christians who love the Lord will say things like, oh, oh I know. I know why you're going to Kauai. Oh, you're really suffering for Jesus in Kauai, aren't you? Hey, make sure you have me out to your church to speak. Um, I'd love to suffer alongside you for the gospel in Kauai. And we know that that's one of the hard parts of this is that people just really don't understand the nature of the situation in Kauai. Uh, though it may be paradise, uh, not everyone there is going to paradise. And it is in desperate need of the gospel. People are hurting there. It has a high suicide rate, addiction. Uh, again, overrun with the darkness of the cults and the New Age and Buddhism and, and just secularism has just seeped in and destroyed what was once this Christian kingdom. Um, and we know that there are so many difficult moments ahead of us as a church, but we're committed to it. And it's hard. It's hard to convince people sort of your true intentions. It's hard to convince people of what the true nature of the situation is. And we know that our team is going to face some very, very difficult days. We know that being a consistent Christian in a culture, really anywhere, but in specifically a place like that, where you're going to actually challenge the idols, we know that it's going to come with severe consequences and conflict. Now, we're going to do it with love. We're going to do it with affection and kindness and compassion and gentleness. But even the suggestion of conflict, we know, is disastrous. Um, and we know that the team themselves is facing a major obstacle, and that is financial. Man, is it hard to live there. The United States, I think, has so disrupted Hawaii and destroyed their economy in so many ways that people, we, we saw in one instance, the median income is like 50000 and the average home price was like $500,000. That doesn't make any sense. That, that's lit, it literally makes no sense. And we know that financially, um, we are going to face difficult times ahead. We have a team of people that are committed to full-time vocational ministry out there to serve the people in Kauai, but it's hard. I mean, I saw in one store a block of cream cheese was $9. $9 for a block of cream cheese. I picked up on one of our first days there, I, I picked up a pack of two 
uh, rolls of toilet paper, and it was, I think, $5 for two rolls of toilet paper. The housing situation there is extremely difficult. The conflict with the culture out there is extremely difficult. It's just hard, and we need help. You know, when we planted Apologia Church many years ago, how God did it was amazing. There's certain parts of me sometimes when I think about it, I think, you're in, you were insane. What possessed you to think that you could do this? You didn't have any support. You didn't have any help. How, what, what, in, what kind of madness is it to step out in that way with no idea what tomorrow holds and no ability to feed your family and to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm being sent to plant this church and I'm going to do it. It didn't make any sense. And we're in that same situation now. Apologia Church is actually a relatively small church. We have like 200 families. Some people might think that's big, but you know, it's not what people think it is. It's a, it's a relatively small church. We have a huge reach around the world. There's no question about that. God has graced us with that. But we're a small church. So here's the thing. With our small family and church here, taking care of the needs of our people and putting legs on the gospel, it taxes us financially. We have a hard time as a church, as a small church that we are. However, um, God, from the very beginning of Apologia Church, funded this whole work. Everything you see with Apologia Church was funded, not by the people inside Apologia Church. We didn't have the money. It was always funded internationally. It was funded by believers just like you who saw what God was doing with this church and our message, and they helped. And what's happening in Apologia Kauai is exactly the same thing. We need the help of believers really around the world to give to this work, to see all of Kauai come under the peace of Jesus. Uh, we need your help. We need financial help. We need prayer. We need help so that our team, as it is out there planting this church, can survive. They can feed their families, and they can be about the work of ministry 24 hours a day on their feet. We need help to make sure that we can reach the people on the island of Kauai. We need help to build the education thing that we're doing out there to educate the youth on the island of Kauai. We need your help for that. Um, and so really, where we're at now, with all that God has done to show us what He has for us in Kauai, we're in a place now where we're saying, okay, now who's in this with us? We need your prayer, we need your encouragement, and we need financial support. And so what we're really asking for in this video is that if you have been touched by what God is doing here, and really through all of our ministry, and if you want to be a part of Apologia Church and the work that God is doing, then the way to do that right now, just to be straight, is to serve together with us and co-labor with us with financial support. And there's a way to do that at ApologiaKauai.com. You can go there, you can get resources, you can learn more about our work, and you can give financially there on a regular basis to make sure that we have what we need as a church to actually do what we're going to do with the gospel on this island. And I want to just say to you, um, I, say, I say thank you a lot. I say thank you a lot because I recognize the grace that God has given to us to do what we're doing and that it hasn't come from us. It's come from God's hand, but His hand has come through you, loyal partners and um, laborers with us. And so I say thank you a lot, all the time. And that's because I mean it. Um, and I just want to say to you who are, who are watching this right now, I want to ask you to consider truly joining with Apologia Church as we do this work, this mission of the gospel on the island of Kauai. Here's our hope. I'm just going to say it. We hope to see the entire island of Kauai become Christian, to come to know Jesus Christ and to be transformed from the bottom up in every area, whether it has to do with addiction or the cults, whether it has to do with family and the church and government. We want to see the message of Jesus affect everything. And we know that we can't do that on our own. We're not lone rangers. We need God's people. Would you consider doing that? Would you consider joining with us on a regular basis by giving financially to this work at ApologiaKauai.com and praying for us constantly? We'd be so grateful, so thankful. So thank you for watching. Ke a kua ma ho o mai ka i pū. Ko ke a au, ko ke la au. I think that's how we got to end this. Amen.
Amen. Wow. I love wow. how amen is the same in every language. Yes. 